Blues Fantasy First Baseball Podcast. My name is David Ayer, and I'm here with Bill Bender. And it has been an eventful week for prospect mavens in fantasy baseball. Uh, several guys have been injured. Uh, several guys have been called up. Uh, probably the biggest name that is starting to get some work at the major league level, Brett Laurie. Yeah, it's huge that he came up and he's impressed. Uh, fantasy owners have been asking us about him in our live chat every week, so it's nice to see him finally come up and he hits a couple home runs. He's hitting 389 so far. All, all things look like he's going to be an excellent pickup, and with the second base and third base eligibility, there's no reason not to go after him. I mean, now, do you think that this is going to have any any other kind of effect on the other Blue Jays players that are that might be on fantasy teams right now? Well, not so much as that guy standing in center field giving him signals from what we've heard. <laughs> but no, no, I think as as long as he shows improvement at the plate and works his way up the lineup, they've got some other nice pieces. The Blue Jays play well at home with the guy in center field, whether or not he's there. And I think he's going to emerge as a pretty good player. You know, there'll be slumps here and there, as there are with all young hitters, but he's not the only young hitter out there right now. Yeah, I mean, one of the guys that is actually getting some playing time, and to me it was just kind of a surprise they got brought up, is Trayvon Robinson. Guy was traded from the Dodgers, uh, is playing some was playing some left field I saw for the for the Mariners now. And, you know, that's been a dead spot for them all year long. They figured why not let him give it a shot. What do you see from him this year? Is he is he worth it in, in deeper leads? Well, the problem with him, and it's going to be a problem with any prospect that I think comes up and, and you're going to use them as a hitter, is the strikeouts. He struck out eight times in 19 at-bats. It's going to take him time to adjust to the major league level. And you got to watch that. I mean, it happened with Paul Goldschmidt last week. That's another guy. He strikes out too much. These young hitters... They're going to strike out too much because they want to get in there and make plays and make big hits. But Trayvon Robinson, certainly some excitement there. And like you said, the, the Mariners have been searching for an answer in that spot all season. I think he'll provide it, but it may take it may not be until September till we see a real impact. Yeah, Robinson too. I mean, they have other guys that they that they want to see play. Greg Hellman maybe even getting some playing time eventually. So. But if you want to talk about guys that are going to get, at least in the near term, a chance to play every day, and I'm going to have trouble saying this name, Johnny Javatea, Tella? How do you say it? I think that's close enough. Okay. Yeah, like I said, he, he's going to get five days a week, from what the manager said there, that he's going to play five days a week start. He's an average guy. He's going to hit three. He's hitting three eighteen right now. He could have hit in the high two seventies. That's reasonable. And, and at that position, second base, there's not a lot of talent. There's been some injuries. Brandon Phillips is a little dinged up. You know, Jose Reyes is another mid to infielder that's out. Not that he's going to be the answer, but it's certainly Giovatella is a guy that you can pick up, add, and see what happens. Now, it's not just the guys that are only getting called up right now. It's the young players that are have been playing for over 100 games now that you also need to pay attention to. Brad Pinkerton on Fantasy Source Baseball wrote about this phenomenon uh, and mentioned a few guys, Danny Espinosa being one of them. Yeah, Brad did an excellent job. If you get a chance, go on to Fantasy Source and read his column this week. He talked about the rookie wall and whether that was a myth or not. He kind of looked at players that had 200 at-bats before the break and 200 at-bats after the break over the last few seasons. Rookies dating back to, like, Brad Wilkerson in uh, 2001-ish. Brad Wilkerson Yeah, he, pulled, he wow. pulled out all the stops <laughs> on this column. He did a heck of a job, found out all that stuff. And maybe the basic thinking, and I'm stealing from Brad here, is that it's not necessarily that these guys get tired. You didn't get tired playing baseball all day. You were out there the next day. It's that they've had 200 at-bats, and pitchers have a little bit of a book on them. They'll have the reasons to get them out, and it's up to these young hitters to make the adjustment. So a guy like Freddie Freeman, he's doing fine. Eric Hosmer, doing fine. They've made the adjustment. Espinosa has not. So what's your actual takeaway from that? Like, What advice do you then give managers based on that information? Well, I think if you're, you just got to watch them in the second half of the season, you actually watch them play. That's another thing. Yeah. Don't just like look at the box score every day. Say you just watch them at the plate. Make your own evaluation. And you're not a scout, but you don't have to be. And uh, you know, if you see a guy like Espinosa falling off, and there's really no answer, which he hasn't had in the second half, it's okay to cut bait. Now that's rookie hitters. The young pitcher thing that we've talked about on the podcast before, and that will be mentioned again and again in fantasy source columns. Is that all the way that it just just the way that it is in Major League Baseball nowadays? Guys like Michael Pineda are going to get shut down in September, if not early in September, 
mid September in those last five in those last few weeks of the season, you might not be without one of your season long studs. Right. A lot of those guys are going to get shut down because of innings limit, and it's just the way it is. I had a friend bragging about taking Pineda in our draft, and I was like, yeah, but you're not going to have him in September. It's just the reality of the situation. But on the flip side, you've got a lot of young pitchers that are going to be called up that haven't pitched yet that are going to get a little look in the majors, like Garrett Richards last night, Henry Sosa, a bunch of guys that you're going to look at and say, who in the world is that? And you just have to be careful with using them. And on the flip side, Go ahead and load up hitters on them. I would. I would load up hitters on If I don't know who the guy is and if his minor league numbers don't blow me away, I'm starting hitters against him every time. Yeah, I mean, basically, you're, you're looking at, unless the, the cream of the crop type guys, you say, you know what, this guy's young. He's going through adjustment periods. I don't care how, what his minor league pedigree is. He's going to get hit right. at least for a little bit. Right. Chances are, if it's not a first round, like when Jordan Lyles was called mm-hmm. up, you knew you at least knew who he, he was. He had some pedigree. The Astros have been talking about him forever. He, he's done pretty well. But if it's just a, a random no name guy that you know, if they come out and have a nice game, great. But these guys typically aren't going to be long term answers on your team. All right, folks. Thanks for joining. Thank you.